This week in AI news, we're covering everything from Chrome's handy new AI writing tool and Adobe's AI that talks to your documents, to Google's personalized app recommendations and Groke's super fast AI processing. We'll also explore Apple's ambitious AI projects, the unexpected behaviors of ChatGPT and Google's Gemini, revolutionary brain research, Google's Gemma project for developers, and SAP's strategic move towards AI innovation. So let's jump right in. All right. So Chrome has introduced a cool new tool called Help Me Write. This tool is designed to help you with writing stuff online. Whether you're trying to sell something, write a review, or book a hotel, it's pretty smart and can even make your writing better by understanding what you're talking about on a web page. For example, if you're reviewing garden tools, it'll use details from the page to make your review more helpful. Starting now, people in the US can try it out on Chrome M122 on both Mac and Windows computers. To use it, you just need to sign into Chrome, go to Settings, find the Experimental AI section, and turn on Help Me Write. Once it's on, whenever you're writing online, you can right-click in a text box and choose Help Me Write to get some help with your writing. It's as easy as that to make your online writing tasks a bit easier. Okay, so next, Adobe just made a cool update to its Acrobat software. They've added a new AI tool that makes it super easy to talk to your documents. Instead of digging through long PDFs or text files to find what you need, this AI assistant can do it for you. It can summarize stuff, answer your questions, and even suggest things you might want to ask about. This is really handy for students or anyone who has to deal with a lot of documents, making it quicker to get the info you need for emails, meetings, or presentations. The AI is smart and keeps your data safe following Adobe's privacy rules. It works with different types of files like Word and PowerPoint and is free for now if you're already paying for Acrobat. Adobe plans to add more cool features to this AI, like pulling info from different documents at once and helping write drafts. They haven't said how long the free trial will last, but they're thinking of making it a paid extra once the trial ends. Now, Google is working on a cool new tool for the Play Store called App Highlights. This tool uses AI or artificial intelligence to show you apps you might like. It looks at what you're into and suggests apps that fit your taste. This means finding new apps will be easier and faster without having to look through ones you don't care about. X user named at Assemble Debug found this feature and shared it online. It's still being tested, so only some people can see it right now. Google hasn't said when everyone will get it or if it'll work on all devices. Here's why it's great. The AI looks at a bunch of data to figure out what apps you might enjoy. This helps you find cool apps without the hassle. Plus, it's not just about showing you apps. The AI can also summarize what an app does, like if it lets you message friends or watch live videos. This can help app makers get noticed by more people, which is awesome for them. In short, this AI feature is changing how we find and choose apps, making it way easier to find the good stuff and skip the rest. Okay, next we have Grok, a company that's making AI work super fast, even faster than ChatGPT. They've designed special hardware to make AI run 75 times quicker than how fast a person can type. This is great because when you talk to AI chatbots or ask them to write emails, you want answers quickly. Grok focuses on making software and processors for AI and machine learning much more efficient. Unlike others who use GPUs, good for graphics and general tasks, Grok made something called LPUs for language. LPUs are better for AI because they handle the way AI thinks about language, making things run up to 10 times faster than the usual. Grok doesn't make its own AI models, but improves how fast others can work. You can even try using their tech for free online with some AI models like Llama 2. They're working on more stuff, but for now they're boosting what's already out there. Now, Tim Cook, Apple's CEO, has been dropping hints about some exciting AI advancements coming our way. This year, Apple wants to show the world it's a big player in AI, not just with new software features, but also with better hardware that could change how we use our devices. Everyone's excited about iOS 18 because it's rumored to be a huge update with a strong focus on AI. Apple is reportedly working on its own AI tech, known as Apple GPT, which started in 2022. This tech is expected to power all kinds of smart features across Apple products, making them more interactive and intelligent. Adding to the excitement, reports suggest Apple's next chips, the A18 and M4, 
will have a better neural engine with more cores. This means Apple devices will be better at AI tasks, making features like Siri and Apple Music smarter and possibly introducing new AI capabilities. Apple's interested in generative AI, which can create text, images, and even conversations. Tim Cook mentioned they're exploring this area and we'll share more details later. With the new iPhone 16 models coming in September with these improved chips, we might see some AI features that are only available on these devices because of their enhanced capabilities. Okay, recently, ChatGPT and Google's Gemini have been acting pretty weird, so here's the scoop on their strange behavior. ChatGPT started giving out nonsense answers, mixing up languages and making no sense at all. People online were sharing screenshots, puzzled if ChatGPT was glitching out. Turns out OpenAI tried to update ChatGPT to be smarter, but it backfired, causing it to spout gibberish. Google's Gemini wasn't far behind with its own oddities. It started reimagining historical figures in unexpected ways. Vikings and George Washington were depicted very differently from what history books say. Google aimed for diversity, but ended up sparking a debate on accuracy and bias leading them to pause Gemini's feature to fix the issue. Why is all this happening? It boils down to AI growing pains. As these technologies learn and evolve, mistakes are bound to happen. ChatGPT's blunders show how a small change can lead to big mix-ups. Gemini's controversy highlights the difficulties in balancing representation with historical facts. These incidents remind us that AI, while advanced, still has a long way to go. They also open up important discussions on bias, representation, and the role of AI in understanding human culture and history. As AI continues to develop, expect more glitches, but also more opportunities for improvement and dialogue on its societal impacts. These are just early days in the AI journey, and it's sure to be a fascinating ride. Okay, next, researchers at Sanford Medicine have created a new AI tool that can tell if a brain is male or female with more than 90% accuracy. This tool helps us understand how men's and women's brains are different, which could be important for treating mental health issues. The team, led by Professor Vinod Menon, found certain areas in the brain, like the default mode network and the striatum, that are key in telling male and female brains apart. These areas are important for how we think about ourselves, learn, and react to rewards. It's not clear yet if these brain differences are because of hormones, the way we're raised, or something else, but the study shows that these differences do exist and might explain why men and women are affected differently by mental health conditions. The AI looks at brain scans to find small patterns that show whether a brain is male or female. This could change how we think about and treat mental health, making sure treatments are right for men and women. The researchers are sharing their tool with others, hoping it will help us learn more about the brain. This could lead to better ways to diagnose and treat mental health problems, taking into account the differences between men's and women's brains. All right, now Google recently also launched a new project called Gemma, which includes smaller, more efficient AI models that are great for creating text and doing similar tasks. This is important because it offers a more affordable option for developers who might not need or can't handle the bigger, more expensive AI models like Gemini. Google's new models are designed to work easily on laptops and come with special tools to help developers use them responsibly and fix any issues that might come up. These models work best with NVIDIA's graphics cards and are free to use on Google's Kaggle platform, which is a place where data scientists hang out and work together. Google hopes this move will encourage more people to create new apps using Gemma, which could eventually lead to more business for Google Cloud. Even though these models are exciting and innovative, Google isn't the only company focusing on smaller AI models. Microsoft is doing something similar with its Phi range. However, Google wants to make sure its models are used the right way. Although they haven't put any strict rules on who can use Gemma, which means there's a chance it could be used for the wrong reasons. Next. SAP has started a new team focused on AI, led by Dr. Philip Herzig. He's the new boss of AI at SAP and will be working closely with the company's CEO, Christian Klein. His job is to make sure AI is a big part of everything SAP does, from creating products to helping customers use them. This team is in charge of SAP's business AI, which means they handle everything from making new AI products to making sure customers can use them well. Since January, Herzig has been working to make AI more important at SAP, helping the company grow by making its products smarter with AI. 
Herzig said that SAP is really good at using AI to get real results. He believes that with SAP Business AI, companies can work better and create more value. He's excited to bring new AI innovations to businesses and work with customers and partners to make the most of AI. Herzig's team includes important leaders like Walter Sun, who looks after all the AI product work at SAP. Sun joined SAP from Microsoft in September 2023. Together, they're focusing on making SAP a leader and using AI to change how businesses operate. All right, that wraps up our video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.